so wonderful to me. He is so wonderful to me. He is so wonderful. And just to know he first loved me. See him like you mean it. Jesus, God. We ask that you move every distraction, God, in the name of Jesus, God, because you are not the author of confusion, God, in the name of Jesus. For everything that's not like you, God, we ask that you move it out of the way, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We ask that you just have your divine way in this place, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, Father, you are King of kings and Lord of lords, and we thank you for being everything we need. All in all, you are all in all, God. Everything we need is in the Lord. If you need to be healed, it's in the Lord. If you need to be delivered, it's in the Lord. If you need to be saved, it's in the Lord. In the name of Jesus, everything you need is in God. In the name of Jesus, God. Oh, God, we ask that you touch right now, God. Every situation, God. Touch those that are here, need to be healed, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Everything you need is in his presence. Don't ever be so quick to get out of the presence of God. Because everything you need is in his presence. If you need to be delivered, it's in his presence. If you need to be saved, 
maker. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. So we're going to sing that on today. Amen. Yes. Amen. I Hallelujah. You. Amen. you are here. Moving in.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have five minutes to say what, what does the Father do. I want to come from uh, the book of Proverbs, yeah, okay. um, first chapter, verses 8 and verses 9. Mm -hmm. And it reads as follows. Uh, listen, listen, my son, mm -hmm. to your father's instruction. Yes, yes. And do not forsake mm -hmm. your mother. Verse 9, <clears throat> they will be a garland to grace <clears throat> to grace your head mm -hmm. and a chain to adorn your neck. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Uh, being a father, being a father <laughs> takes lots, lots, and lots of work. Mm -hmm. Lots yes, of work. Yes. Uh, uh, sometimes as a father, children can be, as a teacher just wanted to say, it can be very disobedient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as a father, you have to be patient with them. Yes. You have to yes. teach, instruct, chastise, and sometimes uh, uh, even place them on punishment. Yes. As our Father, or God up in heaven, has done us at times. At least, you know, I didn't say done us, mm -hmm. else, but at least we, has done me at times. Uh, a little while back here, uh, even though I was going to church mm -hmm. and I thought I was doing mm -hmm. what I was supposed to do in the church, uh, I was still wrong. And God chastised me. He called, uh, he allowed, I'm, I'm not going to say he called out, I'll take that back, forgive me, Paul. He allowed seven of my family members to pass away mm -hmm. within a five year period of that. And I, I, I'm speaking of this because uh, God has a way of giving you attention. Yes. When, yes. when you don't want to hear and obey and listen mm -hmm. to what the, what the Father is saying, right. he'll change the circumstances for you. Yes. And even though, as, as I, I think I heard Dr. 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 Nolan was speaking this morning. Even though I had everything that I wanted, I'm talking actual money, the cars, blah, 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 blah. I lost the most important thing on the face of this earth, which is my family. My sister, my oldest sister, uh, which was the second mother to me, raising me from down in Mississippi, uh, while my own very mother was out in the streets drinking, doing what she wanted to do. But my sister raised me, and she was real close to me. And God, allowed her to pass away first, which really, really disappointed me. And I had to take a look, I had to take, so I'm gonna say it, I'm just, I'm just gonna be honest, because I don't have relig religion, I have a relationship. Uh, uh, it bit me real bad, it almost broke me, because this was somebody that, and my wife can agree with this, this was somebody that was really, really close to me. Where, wherever 
I was, wherever I was, uh, when my older sister got sick, I brought her close to me. Mm -hmm. She was no more than six to seven blocks away from her until her son took her. So, but for me, this was God's way of showing me mm -hmm. that if you don't obey and trust me wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. this is what happens mm -hmm. to, and I'm, I'm just, as for me, to a disobedient son. Yes. So in, in, in the verse, it says, listen. Mm -hmm. That word is key throughout all of it. And I, I'm not just speaking to, to children. I'm speaking to God's grown children, Amen. us, to me Amen. first. Amen. To me first, listen to what the word of God is saying. Yes. Uh, 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 and, and as a father, I speak <coughs> quite often to my grandson, which is my son. I tell them what they need to do and what they need not to do. And I especially, I especially speak to them concerning their significant other. Because they say, how did you and Granny get this far? Well, as I said, and I'm sure some, some of the ladies can attest to this here. It ain't easy <laughs> dealing with me. Amen. Okay. Yes. I was rough around the dozen. And I, yeah, praise God. I, 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 I did, and said that never. Let me, let me, let me, let me quote this here. Never put my hands on my wife. Never did that. But I've said some things, sir, that was not right. That was not right. In my anger and in my drunkenness, I, I, I've said some things going out the door. You did hear me right. Going out the door to my wife. That was not right. And from that day to this one, I, I say before God and before all of you all, I apologize, honey. Yes, you did. Uh, 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 because I know that that's, that is not of God. And as a father, I have to show my children, especially, and I'm, I'm not, you know, this is women, please, but especially. My boy, yes. that yes. it takes a specific man to be able to stand up and apologize and treat his significant other, whether it be your wife, your wife to be, fiance, or whatever it is, but to treat them with respect mm -hmm. and honor. Yes. It goes on to say, and I have to put this microphone up. It says, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. I, I, I said that to, to say this here because when he, when that young man sees me treat my wife with respect, mm -hmm. then he'll be able to hear what his grandma got to say and honor and respect her. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. And as a father, I'm working to the best of my ability to do first and foremost what my father tells me to do. Mm -hmm. And secondly, do what I hear my pastor, my wife. I, I, I think it's stuff she gets on my team quite often. <laughs> quite often. And just live to the best of my ability to live right. Amen. Thank you all. Praise Amen. God. Thank you, Lord. That's a conversation. Happy Father's Day. And at this time, Let's say amen. amen. Thank God for that word. From amen. 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 Good word. Praise God. Let's say amen. God bless you. Let's say amen for none other than brother, musician, engineer, father, so much. Amen. amen. Woodrow Hammond. Amen. I'm going to call him chili sauce today. <laughs>
start with a brief prayer. Lord Father, um, use me as a willing vessel. Let you see all of thee and none of me. Let me say what I have put forth in the atmosphere. May it be edifying to those who are within earshot, and may it break someone's soul. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. So, without mothers, there'd be no fathers. Okay. So let's 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 keep it real. Okay. Women, black women, hold the Genesis gene. You know what the Genesis gene is? Yeah. Okay. We are the only women on this earth that can produce that can produce any hue of person, whether it be albino or Wesley Snipes dark. <laughs> okay. You can go the full spectrum. And that's a blessing. And I'm coming out of Genesis for a reason. A friend of mine had put something on Facebook that I found very disturbing. Um, she said the first oldest um, remains of a female came out of Ethiopia 6 million years ago. And if the Bible is only 2,000 years old, where does that put Adam and Eve? I don't get on Facebook for debates on religion with people who are not religious because God is in charge of space and time. So we don't know when the earth was created. We don't know when it was void. So who's to say what our carbon dating specifies? So come into Genesis 2.22. And the rib which the Lord had taken from man, he fashioned unto a woman and brought her and presented her to man. Also, 1 Peter 5, 2 and 2. Shepherd and guide and protect the flock of God among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but voluntarily according to the will of mm -hmm. um, God and motivate your son to gain, but with wholehearted enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. And actually, we're going to finish up with the Psalm of David. He who walks in integrity and the strength of character and works of righteousness. So my question for the fathers today, if you were a real, would you be a neck real, a rib tick, or, or be spear real? What was the question? <laughs> A McRib. Oh. <laughs> That's my brother. <laughs> a McRib, a rib tip, or a beef spear rib. Okay. Now, I'm working in food science, so I have a little more of an advantage over most people. The McRib is just all the byproducts of what you don't want to see. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you strip off the sauce, it's just a piece of gelatin mm -hmm. with some pork, the stuff that you don't want to see. Kosher hot dogs, seen them. Costco hot dogs, made them. Been there, done that. Mm -hmm. So, speaking from experience. So this type of brother is the kind of brother who you don't know what to expect, when he's gonna show up, if he's gonna show up, and if he's gonna show out. Mm -hmm. That's not the father you wanna be. Amen. Okay? The big real father, he's only seasonal. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah. So, when the pickle's gone, that's it. <laughs> Okay, the rib tip, that's the one that's sucking rib. I mean, he looks good on the eyes and he's the most tender part of the rib. You know, you got, you got to go through a whole lot to eat that rib. But there's a whole lot of bones when you get done. A, a lot of bones. And as Papa was a rolling stone, you don't want that one. You mean there's bones all over the place. Hello, <laughs> hello. What you want is a beef spear rib, yeah. mm -hmm. okay? That's a man's man, that's the oak tree. I was raised by an oak tree, my grandfather. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, that's an oak tree, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. I'll give you a parable. There was um, a widow seeking a shepherd for her husband and her children, okay? Mm -hmm. So this would be blended families. So she was not concerned so much about the shepherd being a goat herder. I had an instructor in high school, his name was Kwame Tupelo, African. He would always say to me, kids are baby goats. Because you know, we can't use slang around other languages without them knowing what, what they are. Mm -hmm. And so I took that to heart. And for you women looking for a Boaz, okay, um, you want a man that's gonna nurture your children. Mm -hmm. That's right. Your existing mm -hmm. children. 
Okay. Stepfathers, our stepfathers, they are the men who step up. Oh, all right. Okay. 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 They step up. Step up. Okay. Mm -hmm. They fill the gap. Okay. Mm -hmm. They make sure that when the mother eats, regardless of the other offspring, they all eat. Amen. 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 When they buy for the house, they buy for the home. Okay. They buy for the home. You know. Coming up as a stepchild, I can tell you firsthand how many times I got stepped on. Okay. But when I became a man, I stepped off. Okay. So um, in conclusion, um, fathers make a lot of sacrifices. Yes, they do. Okay. My children can tell you straight up, it was a long time before I went to um, Applebee's for the two-for-one steak deal. <laughs> it was a minute, you know. It was a minute, okay? And many times, when the mother's not eating, the father's not sleeping. Many times that little red Porsche I had going to Apple, I had to sleep in that car. Mm -hmm. wow. 200 miles round trip. I was too tired to come home, too dangerous to get on the road. Mm -hmm. But I had a family to protect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Miles of feeding. Mm -hmm. I've traveled all over the world. Mm -hmm. But these children, mm -hmm. wives, whatever, they never suffered. I want my mother, I want Nina, Clarissa, Blythe, mm -hmm. Joe, Montreal, and MJ to stand, please. This is why I sing. Amen. Be blessed. Amen. 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 What a word. Beautiful. Is this blessing y'all today? Amen. Amen. We thank God. All right. Brother Boy, before you go. Amen. Thank God for it. Amen. For sharing. Amen. I I would be remiss if I wouldn't talk about my father. The late Deacon Thomas Irving Knox. He was a deacon at Rehoboth, Church of God in Christ for years, and the, the late um, Pastor Elder Virgil Wallace, yeah. Yama Knox, amen. And uh, I thank God because uh, I was a daddy's girl. And you know when you're uh, a daddy's girl, that's because you had a special relationship. Y'all know with your father. Remember the 8 o'clock coffee and you could get from the A&P years ago? Oh, wow. Amen. Yeah. Daddy liked the strongest coffee. Yeah. And he would put sugar and milk in mine. And I'd get up at 5.30. He worked at United Iron and Metal on 6th in Virginia. Now, how can I remember that? Because my daddy would always let us know, wow. I'm going to work to take care of y'all to feed y'all. Right. The father sets a pattern. Yeah. So let's go to the throne for a minute. And Amen. We're going to talk about Amen. So, Almighty and Eternal God, we come before you in the righteous name of Jesus. You are indeed the Christ of the living God, and we magnify your name. How we worship you and adore you. And thank you for all the fathers that's in this house today. Every single one of them. I ask that you bless them and continue to remind them that you gave them the headship of the family. That you gave them, Amen the ability, not with just their physical strength, to take care of their family, their wives, their children, and grandchildren. But you gave them the mental and emotional dexterity to be able to help them to navigate through the storms and the trials of life. Lord, you, uh, you bless the man for a divine purpose, and that's to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Amen. And so, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that you continue to bless every man that's in this house. And Lord, we, we want you to look, look on them, protect them, yes. empower them, yes. enable them, and let them know that they have respect and honor and love from their wives and their children, yes. and that you call them kings and priests of God. Yes. And we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Not going to be with you very long, but we're going to, amen, share a little bit of what the Lord gave me, amen, concerning 
fathers. And, and again, thank you, Mama Mary. Uh, be, being that my father, hallelujah, was a hardworking man. I mean, my father's arms, let me tell you what United Iron and Metal did on, on 6th and Virginia. Because y'all know Milwaukee used to have a lot of factories, a lot of industry, and of course they don't have that anymore. But he would literally, they would have to get cars ready to be ripped apart so they could use the parts again. So he had, he had to lift heavy weights, not for exercise and to get biceps and triceps and a six pack. Did that say right, six pack? But, they, but he did that to take care of us and to provide a home. Amen. I, I remember uh, so many times my mother would say, Tom bought me this house. My mother used to brag about how my father bought her the house that she always wanted. Amen. Now, the man bought the house, but guess what? The mother made it a what? A home. A home. Amen. So let's go quickly. Amen. I'm going to leave before you long because I know y'all got plans. Let's go to Genesis, the 12th chapter. Amen. Genesis, the 12th chapter. And we're going to read quickly. Amen. Our topic today is God's promise to Abraham and his seed. We're going to see the sovereignty of God, the omniscient of God, and most of all, the amen. God watches over his word to perform it. Amen. Now, Genesis 12 and 1. We'll start there. Now, the Lord said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country. And from thy kindred and from thy father's house and to the land that I will show thee. I'll make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse those that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families. Somebody say all. All. All the families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Lot went with him, and Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. You may have your seats. That's the first time that the promise was made. Now, how many know that God's word is forever settled in heaven? And what God has said, God can do. God watches over his word to perform it. He placed his word above his name. And if God gave you a promise, no, without, amen, a shadow of doubt, it shall come to pass. So I just want you to take a, we're going to go through, amen, uh, just a few of these verses in the book of Genesis, reminding us of how God does not forget mm -hmm. what he said he'd do for you. Amen. Is that right? Amen. God has not forgot. Sometimes my father would forget things, amen, especially like when I wanted to go to, back in the day there was Muskego Beach. Y'all yeah, remember, well, some of y'all probably too young, yeah. Yeah. Muskego yeah. Beach, amen. Yeah. I always wanted my dad, amen, uh, to make sure that, that we had some of our favorite snacks. And sometimes he'd come home from work and he was too tired to stop to get the cupcakes. Do you remember the Hostess cupcakes? I probably didn't need it, but I love the Hostess, the chocolate, you know, right. I just love the Hostess. And that was his treat to me and my brothers and sisters, but especially for me, because I'm the one that reminded him. <laughs> Don't forget, <laughs> amen. Let's go to Genesis 26. So there's some promises that your father, amen, your father God, Jehovah El Shaddai, the God that's more than enough. Amen. El Elyon, the most high God that has made to you. And amen. He is omniscient, which means he's all-knowing. He doesn't have a forgetful memory. My father would just retire sometime, and he would forget. But guess what? You serve a God that will not forget. He will not forget you. He will not neglect you. He will not abuse you. He will not mislead. Even though he chases us. Amen. But that's not abuse. Amen. amen. Can I get an amen? amen? He said he would chasten us. Yeah. Amen. So that we would stay, amen, in fellowship. Mm -hmm. And if he can get that, I, old folks would say, if I get that tail, you won't have to be in jail. <laughs> amen. If I get that tail, you won't have to go to jail. Mm -hmm. And that's how natural people, but God knows how to chasten us and bring us through the storms of life. Amen. So the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants. And, but not only that, but I'm so glad he included, he said, all the families oh, of the yeah, earth. Yeah. So Genesis 26. Now, let's see how the promise was passed down to the next generation. Because mm -hmm. here now is the one, amen, that had a promise made to him as well. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerah. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. 
Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. How many know that the word pattern, papa, comes from the word pattern? So I want to encourage the fathers that are here today to know that you set the pattern. You set the strategy. There is a strategic move that you speak out of your mouth that guides your children. Amen. That will direct them in the right path. And so here we see, amen, the Lord speaking, setting the pattern, where we get the word papa or pata comes from the word pattern. And the Lord appeared to them and said, go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. So join in that land, and I will be with thee, and bless thee. For unto thee and to thy seed will I give all these countries. And I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham thy father. And in other words, he said, you're going to take a temporary stop. But I have a plan and a divine purpose, a destiny that will prevail in the earth because I made a promise to your daddy. Amen. And God, one thing God does, his word he will perform. Yes. So look what he said. I will give these countries and I will perform. Then I say he watches over his word to do what? Perform. To perform it. The oath which I swore to Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And I will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So America wasn't born yet, but guess what? God had America in mind. Yeah. Amen. Some of these countries that were around the time of, um, of the old covenant saints, the old covenant people, amen, they are still around. Iran is still around. They called it Persia. Egypt is still around. So, sometimes it's called Mizraim. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. But wherever a country is, wherever there's a people, God had the divine assignment on Abraham's life yeah. and the seed of Abraham, who we know is Yeshua HaMashiach. Somebody said, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. And so, amen, amen, again, God was fulfilling his promise. And then look at the 24th verse. In the same chapter, 24th verse of, of Genesis 26. Right. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. What was God doing? He was continually reminding, amen, generation to generation, from son to son to grandson, amen, that God had a plan and a purpose to keep the blessing moving. Right. I want you to put your, hands, your right hand up and say, Lord, I'm going to keep the blessing moving. Lord, keep the blessing moving. Amen. We, we, we can pass that mantle down to the next generation. I thank God for, uh, amen, Minister Montreal here today because he's had a great vision and a lot of, Amen. Of the qualities that he carries, he had inherited by his grandma and his daddy. Is that right? Amen. Amen. So the, the 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 blessing is supposed to move from generation to generation. Amen. My my grandfather, Grant Ivy. Amen. amen. Out in Mississippi, had a church called Amen. I forgot Spring Hill Missionary Baptist Church, I believe it was. Right. Then my mother pastor, yes. and I'm a pastor, and Sarah's gonna pastor. She is pastor. She she she's being trained now. Amen. But to keep the blessing moving. Somebody say, keep it moving. Keep it moving. Say it again, keep it moving. Keep it moving. Amen. That's God's plan and purpose for every one of his children. Destiny, amen, is designed for every person that God allows them. Most people walk away from their destiny. They sometimes don't fulfill it. They get distracted. They get off of focus. They die before the time. Look at all of our young people, amen, that are dying in the city streets not fulfilling the purpose and the design that God has for their life. Raw people. But my father, amen, bless his soul. My father wanted us on that porch, not just Mother Knox, because Mother Knox had a deliverance ministry. But if you disobeyed daddy, you wouldn't be a partaker of her deliverance ministry, which was a nice shape ironing cord. And if you got real serious, could we would hide the ironing cord. She'd pull out the stitching cord. Amen. Amen. And, and that was her deliverance ministry. She beat the devil out of us. It I didn't say cast the devil out. But back in those days, the saints say, listen, if I can't cast the devil out, I'm going to beat the devil out. And I thank God because, amen, uh, I never did I never did any time. 
Amen. 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 Since he got that tail, so I wouldn't have to go to jail. Amen. Amen. Let's go on. Let's go to Genesis, the 17th chapter. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because, again, the father said, now, you know, let me just say this about my father. Because I, I know most of fathers are the authoritarian figure. or the one. My father did never whoop none of us. The most he would do is raise his voice a little bit. My father was a straw man. He was always afraid of his strip. I told you he tore those cars apart. Mm -hmm. So he never, I have never got a whipping from my father. As a fact, my mama would whip me, my daddy would say, don't you hit her no more. Don't you whoop her no more. Thank you, daddy. Amen. Because mama needed deliverance. But no, I thank God for my mother. She's a great woman of God. Amen. Amen. But she believed in deliverance, y'all. She believed in deliverance. Amen. I believe that some of these young people today that would, amen, steal their cars and all of that, if they were introduced to the deliverance ministry, maybe they'd still be, amen, on this side, amen, because that's not God's plan for any of those young people to leave before the time. They had vision in them. They had potential. They had possibilities in them that they never saw because they were took off. Genesis 17. Let's continue with this. We're almost done. Look what he says here in Genesis the. The, uh, the ninth verse. When you're there, say, I'm there. But well, we'll start really at the seventh verse. Because Abraham, I wanted you to see, amen. Well, we'll have to start at the first few verses, and then I'm going to end up over there by the, uh, by the ninth and tenth verse. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, 99, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Be, you're mature enough, Abraham. You try, you and Sarah try to come up with your own covenant child. I already told you I was going to give you a child, but that didn't work. But now you're mature enough to understand it's got to be my way and not your way. And so he tells him to walk upright. He reminds him that he is the almighty God, the El Shaddai. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, I love this. God talked with him. I remember many mornings I would hear my father praying, and God would be talking to him. The pattern is set. But as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. He repeats the promise. Amen. He rehearses it in Abraham's ear so it can get in his heart. Amen. Amen. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee, and I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, I will be their God. And God said to Abraham, thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. In other words, from son to son to son to son. Amen, pass it down, pass it down, keep it moving. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and, and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. That was the sign. That was the token of circumcision. And every Jew, every son of Israel is circumcised. Yeah. And the practice was so healthy that many of the goyim, which is the Gentiles, a Hebrew word mm -hmm. for Gentiles or goyim, we adopted it in many of our hospitals. Wow. So there's very few children that are not circumcised. But this was the signature of God on them. Yeah. Why? Because circumcision means to cut where the blood flows. Yeah. And that blood, amen, represented not only the covenant, because remember, you can't get saved without the blood. The blood. Amen. So that was a seed, amen, yeah. to cut where the blood flows as a signature of God yeah. that these children are the children of Abraham. Yeah. In many times when they would be in battle and they didn't trust that the Jews who had said who they were, they had to just check out that, that, that covenant, that seed, that signature of God, and they knew who they were. Mm -hmm. So they knew they were a people of covenant. Mm -hmm. And remember, even now, 2,000 years later, 
God is keeping his promise to the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's go into the new covenant now. Amen. Hallelujah. No, 28. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 28, and then we're going to close in the New Testament. But Genesis 28, I just want you to see how that promise. Fathers are supposed to be, amen, not only promise keepers, but watch over the promises that God made to their children. Some of you have children, amen, they get lost in the shuffle of life. But you have the authority of God to lift up your children to the Lord. Amen. My mother lifted me up to the Lord. She was a little rough on me. But you know, when I think back about how wild I was, mm -hmm. Mama had, I was one of the kids. She had 11 kids. And I was probably one of the 11 that did need, you know, a little bit more of a deliverance ministry. Mm -hmm. Amen. So agape is called agape love deliverance. But I don't beat y'all. <laughs> Amen. I just give you the word of God. Amen. Amen. I can see Trishy saying, Trish, tell it out loud. No, no. It's, I wish these other mothers would kind of. I'm not saying that they can't adopt to more of a, a little milder kind of deliverance, like, you know, a Sunday, you're not going anywhere, or they'll take the phone. Mama would be on that extension. Y'all remember the old-fashioned phones had an extension? Yeah. And she would say, get off that phone. You're on a punishment. Right. So, amen. And uh, kids, can you do that? Can you deal with the fact that they are so attached to their, what, cell phone, their social media? Now, that's a real punishment for these kids because they like their phone, don't they? I mean, they are really committed to their phone. I, and back in the day, see, back in the day, uh, grown folks used the phone. Mama didn't feel like you had nothing important to say. So we didn't call, who you on the phone with? She said, get off that phone. That's the way it was. You ain't got, no, you ain't got nothing so important that you on the phone. I said, well, Mama, I just want to call Janice or Pat, my friend. You get off that phone. You ain't got nothing important to say. And back in those days, you didn't, that was for the, the, the that was for grown folks. Now, all kids got a phone yeah. in their pocket. They can call whoever they want to call, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. am, am I right about it? Y'all yeah. really quiet. Y'all yeah. know back in the day they didn't play that. Sure they you, amen. You get off that phone. Amen. And, and they and, and she said like because ain't nothing going on that phone but devilment. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just devilment. Right. Y'all heard that word a long time. Amen. Let's go to Genesis 28, and then we go into Romans, and we're going to clap. Uh, we're going to um, uh, wrap it up. Now, look at Genesis 28, and we're going to read the first seven verses. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him, and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise and go to Padamaram, to the house of Bilu, my mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful. Now, this is Isaac giving Jacob, mm -hmm. passing down the covenant blessing. Mm -hmm. Now, look what he said. And multiply that thou mayest be a multitude of people and give thee the blessing of Abraham. Give thee the blessing of who? Abraham. He didn't say give thee the blessing of, 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 of uh, somebody that you used to kick it with, right. but to give you the blessing of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And to thy seed, and remind him uh, that going, back, going past the time, because sometimes we don't know Amen. You really don't really know the uh, outcome of your future until you take a look at your past. He said, now the, God the Father gave the blessing to Abraham. And I want you to pass it on down and make sure the seed, the next generation, teach your children. Psalm 78 has a whole resume on passing down the generation, the blessing from generation to generation. So if you never read that, fathers, you need to read Psalm eight, uh, 78. And he said, to give the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, when God gave unto Abraham, which God gave unto Abraham. And Isaac sent away Jacob, went to Padam Aram, to Padam Aram and Laban, his son of Bethulu, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob and Esau's mother. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padam Aram to take him a wife from thence, and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. So he had to, amen, he had to be obedient. Everybody say obedient. obedient. There's an honor and there's a respect and obedience that God wants the fathers to carry so that they can pass it down to the next generation. Mm -hmm. When God promised that Abraham, he was going to have a son, 
Amen. And we know in Genesis, the 17th chapter, what did we see come to pass? He told Abraham that he was going to have that son. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Amen. But it was important that Abraham would walk before him and be thou perfect. Is that right? Amen. And he told him, you're going to have a child. So let's run back over there and just for a minute and look at the 13th verse. Mm -hmm. And he said, Genesis 17 and 13. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs to be circumcised. So not only does God want us to have the circumcision of our heart, all of our children, mm -hmm. but even those, amen, that are committed to you. Uh, sometimes the Bible said, how can two walk together except they agree? Yeah. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Mm -hmm. So if you're in business with people, you're in ministry with people, when you're in partnership with people, you want them to have the same kind of heart mm -hmm. that you have. And so he's a, he here he's advising, God advising him, make sure that the token of what, of what I've given you be on the people, not only your family, mm -hmm. but even those that you have bought with your money, your servants. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then he said that my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised, uncircumcised man whose flesh is of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He had broken my covenant. Mm -hmm. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be the mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. And said in his heart, shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? Amen. And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, oh, that Ishmael might live before me. And God said again, Sarah, the promise was to your wife, you and your wife. And God said, Sarah, thy wife. That's why it's so important that we understand the covenant of marriage. Mm -hmm. Shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will bless my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with the seed after him. Amen. But I'm going to bless Ishmael as well. Well, let's go to Romans, the fourth chapter, because I don't have time to go into it. But, but the sons of Ishmael were blessed. They got oil and oil and oil and oil and oil. Amen. Ask Saudi Arabia. Amen. Let's go to Romans, fourth chapter. And let's close here. And so the promise that God gives to the fathers Amen. So that they can, amen, pass it down. Mm -hmm. That they can move it from one generation to it is a reality. It should be a reality in our life. Mm -hmm. But, amen. But just like the promises, you, we have to understand that there is a covenant faithfulness, obedience, mm -hmm. making sure that we obey the word of God. That fathers would teach their children. Mm -hmm. Raise them in the admonition of the Lord like Ephesians the 6th chapter said. Mm -hmm. don't, don't, uh, don't distress them. But raise them up, admonish them, mm -hmm. encourage them. Yeah. You have a responsibility. And I believe every father will stand before God one day and give an account of how he carried out the plan that God had for fathers. Mm -hmm. Romans 4th chapter. And let's take a look at the first few verses. Then we'll close in 16 and 17 and 18 of, of Romans. What shall we say then? Romans 4 and 1. What shall we say then that Abraham my father as pertaining unto the flesh have found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he have whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Not to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted to him. For righteousness. So Abraham, it wasn't that Abraham didn't lie. He did lie. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. He did lie to, to protect his own heart. Mm -hmm. Remember, because Sarai, amen, was a beautiful woman. Even at 65 years old, she must have been beautiful. Because he said, tell, tell, tell them that, that, that's, that you're my sister. And indeed, he wasn't truly what somebody might say. Well, he, she was his half-sister. But at the same time, she was his wife. Amen. Amen. So truth has to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Amen. You, you, you can't say that she just your, your sister when you know that, that she's your lover and your wife. So Abraham had his little things, but still God still loved Abraham. Mm -hmm. And he, was, he came from a family of, of moon worshipers, of idolatry. So Abraham is our father. 
God teached him so he can teach the generations, and we still learn from Abraham. Amen. Now look what else he says. For Abraham was justified by works he would have had to glory, but not before God. He wasn't justified by works. He was justified by faith. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at the fifth verse. But to him that work of not, but believe on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness for David. Mm -hmm. Remember what David, amen, also described the blessedness of the man whom God imputed mm -hmm. or transferred righteousness without works. So your faith, mm -hmm. amen, we're saved by faith through graces, not of works, but it's the gift of God. Right. Because you believe God, because you love God, because you obey God, mm -hmm. amen. Yeah. We're saved by grace through faith. Yeah. Not of any works of righteousness that we can do, because our righteousness is what? Filthy rags. Filthy rags. I can't be good enough to be good enough to get in heaven. But I can say I have somebody that is my righteousness. And who is, what's his name? Jesus. Amen, the Lord Jesus Christ. Saying, blessed are they whose iniquity are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Well, how were they covered? By the atonement, by what Christ did on the cross of Calvary. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Jesus paid it all unto all of him I owe yes. for sin that left what? But Jesus did what? Wash, Wash it, white as snow. So it said, cover this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the armed circumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness, and it was. Now, how was it then reckoned? For when he was in circumcision, or in uncircumcision. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Amen. Because God, Abraham believed God, and then he circumcised, got circumcised. He received the sign of circumcision, a seal of what? Righteousness of the faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father. In other words, God did it before the circumcision came, so he would believe on God. And of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, because he knew the Goyim was coming. Mm -hmm. He knew the Gentiles were coming. Yes. That righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Yes. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of circumcision. We're talking about the Jews. But who also walk. Now check this out, y'all. Mm -hmm. Walk in the steps of that faith. Of what faith? Our father. That faith of our father Abraham. Father. Which he had being yet uncircumcised. So we're not saved by any works of righteousness that we do. For the promise that he should be heir of the world, amen, was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Of faith. Yes. For if they which are law of, of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect, because the law work of wrath, for where no law is, there's no transgression. In other words, the law came to show us what sin really was, the degradation of sin, the, uh, the, the captivity, the bondage of sin. But Jesus came to save sinners, is that right? Amen. That we might be set, set free. Amen. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace. What is grace? God's unmerited favor. You didn't earn it. It was freely given when you accepted Christ as Lord. Amen. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law talking about, amen, the people of the covenant, mm -hmm. but to that which is of the faith of Abraham, father. who is the father, he's the what? Father, father, of, father of us all. Yeah. As this is written, I made thee. That's the promise fulfilled. Mm -hmm. The father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead, mm -hmm. call up those things which be not as though they were. Well, no wonder faith is the substance of things hopeful. Mm -hmm. It's the evidence of things yeah. not seen. If you believe it, you can conceive it. God can do it. If you believe in faith, if you ask anything according to his what? Word. His word. will or his word, he hears us. Mm -hmm. Who against hope, look what it says here, believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. Mm -hmm. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body when he was 100 years old, mm -hmm. neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not. At this time in Abraham's life, he had gotten delivered from any doubt or fear mm -hmm. or any chance of thinking that what God said he was, he was not be able to perform. Mm -hmm. Abraham was what? Look at that 21st verse. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully what? Persuaded mm -hmm. that what God, what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. I'm going to ask you this question. 
Do you believe even now that what God has promised you, he can't perform? Oh, yeah. Do you believe by faith that what God says, he can do it? Amen. Do you believe that God watches his word over his word to perform it? Yes. Do you believe that you can be delivered and walk in freedom and liberty? Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. liberty. He knows your uprising, and your down sitting, you're going in and you're coming out. Yes. He knows the way that you take. Yes. Amen. Why? Because he's a father that loves you, cares about you, concerned about you, provided for you. He is Jehovah Shema. Yes. Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. He is Jehovah Raphia, yes. the Lord that healeth thee. Yes. He is our Jehovah Jireh, mm -hmm. the Lord that provides. Mm -hmm. There is no area in your life untouched by God because he's a father that cares. Yes. I, I, I want to sum this up by saying this. Today, if there's ever a time that we need the fathers to step up, there are so many children who are orphans, and then there's those who are spiritual orphans. They don't realize they have a father named Jehovah God, and he's gave him the son, Jesus Christ. There are some that have not yet received their sonship because they have not yet said yes to God their father. But we're going to pray as we close today that the spirit of not only lawlessness, but that spirit that tells children that they're fatherless, that they're orphans. Because anyone that gives their life to God their father is no longer an orphan. And God will destroy that spirit of being feeling like an orphan. And with that, he will destroy that spirit of lawlessness. Because I really believe that the reason why there is so much lawlessness, so many are our orphans spiritually. But they don't have to be. Amen. They may have a father in the home, but is he really in the home? Or is he at the house? I'm gonna say, is he in the home or is he just at the house? Like uh, brother, brother Woody, who's, you can see that gift of preaching on him. It ain't going to be long. Is that right? You can see the call manifesting itself. Because when you speak truth, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we can't say that we're not, what it look like if I, amen, tell Sarah, um, uh -uh, you know, you my daughter, but, you know, and let somebody else raise her. To be a mother, my mother said, you know, you had her young, but you don't, you don't, you don't, that bed that you, yeah, you don't, you don't sleep in your bed. <laughs> so just like we have to be mothers, and as Brother Woody brought up, all, we are the gates to this world. Amen. Well, the Father is the gatekeeper. Father. Somebody say, Fathers, Father. you're the gatekeepers. The gatekeepers. Amen. And so we give God praise. So as we go through the throne, let's pray. So Almighty and Eternal God, we are so grateful for the spirit of fatherhood. The spirit of father has, fatherhood has such a powerful effect on children. That young man, that teenager, that young boy, even that toddler, the first thing that come out of a toddler's mouth, a baby's mouth is da-da. The first thing a baby says is da-da. He don't say mama, he said da-da. The first words a baby speaks, yeah, you too, baby. When it came out your mouth, it was da-da. And that was a signature on the baby's mouth that that baby had a father. Because when children don't have that father in the home, there's a hopelessness. But Lord God, we lift up all the children to you that feel like they're not loved. That that spirit of being an orphan has clouded their judgment. Because they said, well, why shouldn't I run down the street and zigging and zagging and and speed, and they have no hope. But Lord, we pray that fathers will step to the step to the plate, step to the table, step to that young boy, whether it's his own biological child or one by marriage or one a spiritual son. 
even if he has to, no matter how adaptable he has to be, that there's a process in his fatherhood yeah. that he will speak life and speak wisdom, speak instruction, and be an example, a pattern. Papa, a pattern. Our God left us a pattern. Yeah. Even the Lord Jesus Christ said, my father, which is in heaven. Be holy as my father, which is in heaven. Uh, the words of my, that I speak, my father speaks. Leaving us a pattern. That our father, our God, yeah. he reigns. He loves us. He cares about us. And I pray for every, yeah. every, every young person, stand on your feet. All of the children in here, stand up on your feet. All you children, stand up on your feet. Amen. Stand up on your feet. Amen. Montreal, come up here. You're going to do the blessing over these children. You're going to bless these children. Come on up here. Come on, children. Amen. Y'all come and stand right here. Kind of guy thing. Amen. And I want Montreal to do the blessing over these children. Just stand right here, kids, children. Amen. Stand right there. Go right here. Amen. Montreal, here. Come on over here. Get the mic and just put it. And I want you to bless the, the children. Y'all turn around this way. Because it goes from generation to generation. His daddy already spoke. And now he's going to speak the blessing over these children. Amen. Come on, children. Let us bow our heads. Amen. Dear most heavenly Father, I ask you to touch this precious generation. Amen. Amen. We know that there are spirits of confusion. There are changes in our education. There are changes in the way that we identify the Lord. You stay consistent in your word. Your word is ever so present and never changes. Allow them to see a brighter future than what the news see. Allow them to be able to reach the next generations. And as we continue to put seed into these young people, well, let them imagine. They have dreams. They have yet to dream. They have visions that they see. Let them come to fruition and let them understand, whether it be a praying grandmother, grandfather, an elder, an auntie, to sit at the knee of wisdom and listen closely, Lord. I ask you to give them the ability to bring their imagination to life and to give them things that can save this world. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All righty. Well, praise God. Amen. Somebody clap your hands. Hallelujah.